good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen my name is uh, philip and i welcome all of you for the fifth edition of way to wealth bf bfsi seminar uh thank you for turning up in good numbers we are expecting more people to come uh the topic for today's session is cyber liability insurance cyber liability incidents like data breaches malware attacks ransom etc are becoming and common place and affects business of all sizes and in all sectors the cost of these incidents to business are high not just financially but also by creating a potential legal liabilities today's webinar aims to provide insight into aspects like various kinds of cyber exposure faced by businesses and salient features of cyber liability insurance additionally we will also discuss a few case studies which will provide some relatable ex examples to your relative business it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker mr t l arulachalam director global strategy and specific projects special projects head liability and cyber practices he is from bharatri insurance brokers private limited mr arulachalam is a familiar name to the regular participants on this bfsi webinar series he delivered an excellent presentation on directors and officers liability insurance last month Mr. Arunachalam is a seasoned insurance professional with over three decades of experience in both Indian and global markets. He began his career with New India Assurance and served in various capabilities for over a decade. After privatization of the insurance industry, he moved to IFCO Tokyo, where he headed the Japanese and Korean business unit, Delhi NCR commercial business, and Chennai operations. He then served as an executive vice president in Monarch Insurance Company, Philippines. Arunachalam has returned returned in India to India in 2010 and has since then been associated with Bharatri Insurance as a whole time director. His areas of expertise include liability and marine, where he has structured unique covers and handled complex claims for prestigious corporate clients. He is a very well regarded practitioner within the insurance ecosystem. In the cyber liability insurance domain, Mr. Arunachalam is a must sought sought out. speaker having conducted training sessions for various clients like elite siso club dynamic siso mumbai tycon chennai sakka bangalore and etc mr arunachalam is a post graduate by qualification and he is a qualified lawyer associate of insurance industry and uh, he is a certified six sigma green belt holder also ladies and gentlemen we will have the q and a session at the end of the presentation uh mr venkateshan will be handling the q and a session please free to uh, post your questions we will now hand it over to mr arnaj thank you philip for the nice words of introduction is the audio clear philip yes sir, it's clear okay uh, good afternoon uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, at the outset uh, let me thank shantanu and way to wealth for providing this opportunity uh, these uh, seminars are knowledge sharing seminars uh, in the bfs series that way to wealth has been uh, handling our sincere compliments to them so that uh, the awareness among the insurance public uh, would grow especially in a, in a year like this when uh, awareness will definitely save not only life but also saves organizations uh, today's discussion will be uh, focused upon the risk exposure for corporates uh, and uh, we'll be dealing with uh, uh, the horrendous uh, exposure that the organizations are looking at today which is cyber risk i have with me my colleague uh, venkat so uh, close to the end of the session venkat will be uh, bringing up the questions that uh, you may be posting on the chat box uh, and maybe kaushal can also uh, come up with a question which you have shared on the email so i would welcome uh, those questions and uh, to the extent that possible definitely will respond to each and every question and i will now share screen and then start the presentation okay so uh, in the next 45 minutes uh, 40 to 45 minutes i'll take you through what has been the experience uh, of me as an insurance advisor uh, being close to customers discussing with them their risk exposure uh, all the while till the cyber became a buzzword among corporates being a additional risk exposure uh, our job was to spend time with corporates 
uh, understand their uh, risk, understand their business, their products, and the different uh, layers of risk exposure they may have. For the past uh, five years, I would say, there have been uh, more intense uh, uh, discussions and conversations that I would have had with corporates. Uh, it has become a habit for me, even about four to five years back, to bring up this uh, topic when we discussed every other, uh, we reviewed their insurance policies, we uh, discussed about their uh, damages and losses. Uh, the, the discussion started uh, including cyber as an essential part of the discussion. And uh, I'm sure uh, corporates in India are catching up on this and uh, uh, more and more engagement would make sure that uh, the understanding gaps can be easily addressed. Before we come to cyber insurance, I wanted to share with you uh, what I think would be cyber risk because it's very important for anybody whether you are a customer or you are a risk advisor or you are an insurance carrier a good deal of understanding of risk is very important before even we talk about insurance so these are two sides of a coin risk being there which is about to impact the corporate and an insurance solution being there to address the financial outcome of that so I think it, it's worthwhile for us to discuss a little about what is cyber risk? We may have our own different viewpoints. I may be a customer having a business with minimum exposure to cyber risk. Or I may be at the other end of the spectrum, an e-commerce company with 100% exposure to being online. If I'm not online, uh, my business will be dead. I mean, what is my position as regards dependency on IT system, dependency on networking, dependency of business being available 24 by 7? Where am I placed? I'm, my story is not the same. Or I may be a risk uh, advisor. Uh, did I allow a gap in uh, understanding the cyber risk of customers? Did I fail to advise it? Or thirdly, I'm a risk carrier, I'm an insurer. Was my understanding of cyber risk of the customer not complete? When the proposal came to me, what was my understanding about cyber risk? Because each type of organization, each business is very unique in the way cyber risk would operate. As I mentioned, between uh, companies with least dependence on internet or being available on the network or 100% dependent, the, the exposure could be much different, the financial impact would be much different. So I would uh, take you through some of the perspectives on uh, what could be cyber risk for uh, corporates. We have seen in the past few years, instance after instance, how big this can be, how severe it can be. Uh, quite a few very informed people, even in Indian market, otherwise very well informed, considered cyber risk to be a hoax. They said nothing like that. Um, uh, business won't fold up just easily. This is just another instrument, another insurance policy to be sold. Uh, you're, you're talking from the air. But when incidents like this uh, happen, then reality strikes. When you see money go away from you in front of you and uh, your, uh, your uh, pocket uh, being picked and your treasury being emptied, then uh, one realizes that this risk is real and, and uh, it is going to impact us uh, substantially. And uh, organizations in different sectors uh, were affected in different ways, whether it's a bank or a pharmaceutical company or a manufacturing company, they have different uh, types of risk. And nobody is beyond uh, impact. If you thought government agencies have the wherewithal to put up the best defense, uh, best uh, risk uh, protection features, best mitigations, best redundancies, best in the world, maybe not. So when governments uh, with uh, uh, much more uh, maturity, much more capability are facing the heat, then imagine the position of private organizations who may not be as endowed with the resources to protect themselves. So if event after the event, it is going to prove to us that uh, there is no organization which is totally insulated from a cyber attack. Uh, this is an Indian incident where uh, 3.2 million uh, card uh, uh, data was uh, hacked and uh, even pharmaceutical companies uh, have been facing the heat. So more and more incidents are telling us that cyber risk is real. It is going to impact organizations, at least in the case what you see on the screen uh, is a case where uh, cyber attack uh, made the company bankrupt. They went out of business because they were totally dependent on, on cloud. They were a software escrow company and uh, the, uh, the hackers took control of their uh, uh, cloud uh, access. And then uh, they demanded money before the customer could organize what they want to do, whether they should go to law enforcement or they should, they should uh, prepare for uh, responding to the hacker. Uh, time was running and one day the hackers decided to wipe off 
all the secure all the code that was there which was not code belonging to them it was belonging to customers on whose behalf this company was keeping the code in escrow so that uh, the payment could be made to software development companies uh, so they they declared it's a 200 million dollar organization they announced uh, bankruptcy so at least i have this one case to show that a cyber attack can uh, uh, fold up an organization this is the news uh, every day uh, shipping line already being uh, impacted worldwide even today's news was even 10 days after the incident they are slowly trying to recover their uh, operation you know logistics industry shipping industry world over is so connected so much network that uh, uh, it has a complete dependence upon it system and uh, this is a very uh, deep shock on how they uh, can operate especially after the attack so incident after incident it is going to prove that uh, uh, this this uh, risk is real can you imagine you you, you are at, uh, you have a home you have a family and then one day the burglar comes in he he goes and hides in the attic without your knowledge he is inside your house he is in a room in the top floor or he is hiding in uh, the backyard he is hiding from you but he is inside your house and then he stays there not for a one day but for a few weeks possibly beyond that and then he watches where you keep your uh, resources your money and jewelry where you keep where you keep the if you keep your cupboard where you keep the key everything he watches one day he decides when you are sleeping he decides to act and then he cleans up your your cupboard and then he runs away does it sound like a familiar story is it a hollywood hollywood thriller but at least in a real case a large us retailer faced exactly the same thing hacker came in uh, not directly but through a vendor they were able to access the ip of a large us retailer with thousands possibly 10000 stores across north america you uh, those who are familiar with the cyber security industry would know which case i'm talking about and uh, through the billing system uh, he was able to access the point of sale machines every point of sale machine device across stores across north america the hacker was able to access through a malware and then patiently they were collecting they were uh, waiting for the credit card uh, debit card information to collect and one day they, uh, they they transferred the data about 40 million customers card information was uh, taken away and what is quite amazing is the organization which was the victim was not aware the hacker was uh, residing uh, in their own network that's how uh, amazing it is that how severe it can be that you won't even know somebody is already in your system possibly there are hundreds of more cases like this where you are an organization you are a business promoter you are going about doing your uh, business activity and there is somebody has come in without uh, authorization he is coming with a bad intent depending on who you are or your insurance company or your bank or your healthcare company or your hospital or your or your hotel you know the large hotel chain where 500 million card customers uh, unique personal information was taken passport numbers social security numbers and the credit card information date of birth 500 million it can become as heavy as that and then you wouldn't you didn't even know from which direction it came and why did it happen to you so cyber risk is in my point of view something real which corporates have to recognize if they have done well to recognize their physical risk their uh, cargo in transit risk and their financial risk their forex risk even their political risk if they are completely unaware or they have not paid attention to cyber risk possibly it is already high time that anybody in business uh, should pay attention to this and uh, there is always a discussion on that if you are a larger organization the impact on you could be substantially heavy which is which is something one can uh, appreciate and understand but if you are an sme you are a small and medium risk what kind of liability you will have to absorb a cyber attack and uh, what kind of attack it will be would it be a ransomware attack and then the entire system is taken off is your you may be an sme but your system could be quite dependent upon availability of network availability of it system is your business like that and what happens if you're not able to progress you're not able to uh, open the doors and then start business next day morning is that your uh, exposure uh, it's time everybody in business should uh, pay closer attention to understand what is cyber risk first before even talking about insurance are we at risk as individuals we know pretty well there have been enough in told to us that if, if you are a customer of a bank don't uh, share your otp that could be called from uh, hackers and then uh, illegal elements asking you to share the information that you have maybe your credit card number 
or uh, your OTP or your password. Individuals are being cautioned so much by various agencies, including government. But uh, definitely, everybody's story is uh, unique to the individual or organization. But when, when we talk in the corporate uh, environment, it is a bit, a bit more important because any corporate of any size is a contributor to the economy, is a contributor to the community. Even a 10 person organization is giving employment to 10 people, then you can imagine organizations which employ hundreds of people and thousands of people, uh, they, they can't afford to expose their business to risk like this. And this is an emerging risk. We don't, we don't even come to comprehension in what manner this will come. So uh, the point that I wanted to make is, uh, it is our job to uh, be realistic about this risk. These are cases, especially in the uh, US and European market, which became very severe in terms of financial outgo. And as you uh, pretty well know, in the Western countries, the regulations relating to cyber are quite well defined. Very well ahead, those uh, economies, those countries, those legislators brought in legislation which made it very clear to everybody, all the stakeholders know that what does it take to keep private information private? That as simple as that. If private information is not secured, it is not preserved carefully, it is not handled carefully, and it is not disposed of, if it has to be disposed of, as in the European declaration, the right to be forgotten. If somebody's private information is to be forgotten, even forgetting it has to be in a responsible manner. It, the regulations are very clear. If due to uh, uh, unauthorized access, unfortunately, your systems have been exposed, as I was mentioning, nobody's system is 100% uh, secure. There could be a very well equipped and intelligent hacker who can have access. In these economies, in these countries, the law provides for a very responsible way of handling the incident. Uh, firstly, uh, the breach management. That means every person whose information has been compromised, you could be a customer taking a credit uh, rating uh, report from a, from a credit rating agency. You could be a customer of a bank. You may be a policy holder of an insurance company. You may be a patient taking the service of a hospital. Your information has to be private if it is not kept uh, with uh, the due care, with diligence, and with all the security framework provided by the government and the regulators. Then uh, you are seen to be non-compliant. There has been something wrong in the way you handled it. And uh, if that is proved, those uh, regulators and authorities are uh, having the uh, legal provisions to bring you to justice as an organization. So these are instances where these organizations had to already incur extraordinary amount of uh, expense to manage the situation. In most cases, these are not even financial losses. These are not even legal liability payments. These are just costs. This is, these are costs to handle the breach management, to engage uh, agencies and uh, organizations, also providers to manage the whole scene. If, uh, if it's a bank or a retailer losing credit card or debit card information, then the credit notification to each card holder is very important. And uh, also a credit monitoring service to be provided to each, each customer is very important. It's provided in law. So uh, you can understand uh, how heavy it's going to be. From the Indian point of view, uh, also it's going to become heavy when the legislation comes in. We are waiting uh, for a legislation to be uh, cleared in Parliament. Now, an understanding of what is cyber risk from the insurance point of view becomes uh, quite important. Any risk which is emanating from the use of electronic uh, data and it being uh, shared from one point to another through uh, tools that are there, uh, using the internet or even not using the internet within an environment, if uh, any risk is there which is emanating from using information or data. It could be, if you take cryptocurrency, it's a data or information which has a value, monetary value. Secondly, as a cyber risk would be a risk that can result in physical damage. These are two types. Uh, uh, IT professionals and the security professionals tell me that it is possible for a hacker to send hundreds of thousands of instructions to a computer and uh, or a server and uh, make it crash. And off late, there are any number of incidents which have proved that um, uh, hackers can access manufacturing facilities and then take control of manufacturing activity and damage uh, industrial assets. It is happening more and more. Uh, whether you're talking of Iranian nuclear reactor access, I mean, it being a state sponsored is a different subject matter. But uh, if someone wonders whether uh, manufacturing uh, installations can be accessed and hackers can successfully gain access to those installations, 
There are more and more instances of steel manufacturers in Germany was talked about three, four years ago, where hackers access the uh, aluminium smelter and the lateral control was taken by the hackers and then they were not able to control, they were not able to shut down the plant and uh, the severe damage to the plant was there. Then Hydronorsk is a case in Norway where again this happened and uh, uh, Honda is another case recently being discussed. So are the hacker um, able to cause physical damage is another factor to understand cyber risk. And fraud is understood by everybody that is by manipulation of data, by theft of data, or by illegal uh, use of data, uh, fraud can be committed and then an individual or an organization can be disadvantaged financially. And ultimately, beyond whatever I've said above, beyond anything else, liability could be a severe impact and uh, cyber risk should be seen by anybody, especially a corporate uh, uh, person uh, or an entity. Cyber risk should be seen more from the liability point of view because for every corporate, the liability risk also could be very unique. If you are an outsourced manufacturer, you, your principal has given you specifications as to what uh, process you should follow, what raw material you should follow, what design you should follow. If the, those specifications have been provided frequently in soft form, in, in, in electronic form, and you are uh, keep preserving it in your system so that you are able to comply with those specifications, and that is stolen, then you have a liability facing your principal. Uh, a pharmaceutical company which is into research has R&D data, especially if you are a form, if you are a research agency like what they call CRAM facility, contract research and manufacturing. You provide research uh, as a service to large pharma companies. You may be holding the information molecular data provided by your principal that could be worth millions of dollars. So today, even an Indian corporate should uh, look at cyber insurance uh, beyond the financial cost and risk from the liability point of view and uh, provide the due attention and importance. Now, uh, cyber uh, uh, risk, the, the additional issue is this is cross-border. Every other incident that has been reported, uh, you see that the, the actor is from an East, East uh, European country or from a known Southeast Asian country, which is well known for uh, encouraging this kind of activities for their own advantages. Uh, where uh, you can uh, hire a hacker and access anybody across the world and steal information, what they call industrial espionage. And how do you bring them to justice? How, how do you um, get your own law, law uh, um, uh, courts and then enforcement agencies to get access to those uh, actors? How do you bring them to book in your jurisdiction? This is a major challenge. And uh, as uh, we have seen in the past, uh, 12 countries or 13 countries are seen to be responsible for 70% of the attacks because it is uh, lucrative for them and uh, the authorities in those countries do not curb those practices. Uh, I'm not naming those countries but everybody who has been an eager observer of uh, cyber risk will know which countries I'm talking about. And uh, incidents like WannaCry or NordPetya, you can imagine one incident can cause uh, major disruption across the world. Organizations having global footprint will be impacted. Then countries across the world and uh, companies with uh, which have the least dependency on IT and most dependency on IT, they can be uh, really severely impacted by just one incident. So I read this in uh, media that uh, even banks in India uh, had faced this uh, uh, in the year 2017 and 18 and 19. Uh, successive incidents where a cyber attack resulted in banks losing uh, money, uh, even compromised to the SWIFT platform. This has also been reported in the media where banks uh, were, were unable to prevent their SWIFT platform being hacked. The methodology used were uh, extraordinary. And as I was mentioning, in those countries where cyber uh, 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 hackers and uh, cyber criminals are not curbed, they are not brought to book even in that country and they are impacting uh, organizations or individuals in other countries is not uh, discouraged, then uh, it has uh, reached the level of sophistication that uh, you can order uh, the cyber attack like you order food from a, a food uh, ordering app. Uh, so it's getting even more complicated when you are unable to bring those actors to justice and you are not unable to catch them and uh, the value of stolen data is also going up. What you, can, what you can do with 500 million records of uh, passport numbers and credit card numbers and, uh, and date of birth and addresses, 
it is left to the uh, greed of uh, those uh, criminals what they want to do and everybody again who has been a keen observer would have uh, heard about dark net dark net is a chore bazaar for stolen information not only stolen information stolen contraband uh, it's got a different uh, way of access how do you uh, reach dark net i have not done it in the past but uh, those who read about it will know that uh, anything that is stolen which is uh, stolen information can easily easily reach there and it is available for uh, purchase so you can always buy let's say 100000 records of you can say indian uh, credit card or debit card data or indian high net worth individuals so everything is got a price but the the person who is buying that data what is he going to do is he is not known to anybody is he going to again sell it to somebody else or is he going to access the uh, financial information of the individual is he going to prepare duplicate passports is he going to prepare cloned cards is he going to uh, make somebody else believe uh, by by using the credentials and identity of this person or whose data has been stolen is he going to impersonate and then steal from somebody else not known to anybody not known to us so this is something real that uh, both uh, individuals and organizations should be paying attention as i mentioned the cases in india are going up every other day you are going to uh, see uh, instances of uh, individuals getting uh, due Uh, which is why banks and government are repeatedly telling be responsible about your uh, uh, OTP and the, your password and, and don't share it with anybody who want to call you and ask for it. Uh, I can tell you a personal uh, story. Recently, when I was installing a, a dish uh, uh, satellite TV, then the gentleman said, "Sir, you got you got a free uh, some kind of a movie uh, scheme. There was a fire stick we are going to give you, and it is free for you. It's worth three thousand. We will give it free." that was okay but throughout the day there were repeated calls from he says his office saying sir we are going to activate that stick can you tell us the otp we are going to activate that uh, uh, amazon fire stick can you tell us the otp and uh, this call went to my wife she didn't know who is calling why they are asking for otp she alerted me maybe i became paranoid i told anybody who is going to ask for otp even if it going to be your brother or sister you have to apply a break and wonder why is this otp business is there so i had to call that company in the evening and then tell them that one of you may be going to jail because you are you are asking for our otp so that person said no no sir it is not for any other purpose only for activating your fire stick so i told that person if you going to ask the otp you may be asking for the otp for activating a satellite tv program or a movie channel but i will assume that you are asking the otp for stealing money from my bank that will be my presumption so it is as sensitive as that is going is got to be a culture for individuals in india to be more aware and uh, possibly a culture in organizations to be more aware even today most of these incidents that we are seeing in india are an outcome of individuals not being as careful which is why they say cyber security is a matter of culture a security culture has to be there and they say security hygiene in terms of the infrastructure but beyond that your uh, average uh, associate or a team member or, or an employee how careful he is when he gets an email which says invoice attached it is from an unknown name it just says uh, based on your order uh, we have supplied invoice attached please make payment is your employee going to suspect the email or is he going to double click and open that attachment it boils down to that simple fact did we train our employees to be careful every incident that you are seeing on screen possibly is an outcome of an employee innocently clicking on an attachment innocently opening a zip file which is an attachment innocently clicking on an image which is an attachment or uh, innocently clicking on a hyperlink in the body of an email all of this could have, could have triggered a compromise to the system not only his own computer his own device but uh, across the network if you take these cases uh, which happened in india they they have a, a extraordinary uh, way in which they have happened for example i'll explain to you this case of how 130 crores can be paid off this is a, a company which is located in mumbai it's a subsidiary of a multinational and this, this company is operating in uh, mumbai it had a ceo indian ceo of the subsidiary who is an expatriate so he gets an email supposedly from his uh, his group uh, ceo or a group chairman saying that uh, we are going to uh, have a, a confidential discussion we will come on a con uh, conference call and in that call the call came in the person who spoke was not the actual chairman or ceo it was a hacker he impersonated the actual group ceo sitting in that country 
and then inform this person in India that we are going to make a, a, a very confidential investment in China. They are going to make acquisition. Nobody knows about it. Only uh, you are going to know about it. Maybe you are a finance person. We are not doing it from our home country because of uh, regulations in the country being very difficult. We are doing this from India. So you are once uh, uh, the whole matter is cleared, you will make payment. He also brought in another person whom he mentioned as the legal counsel. He said all the methodologies will be explained to you by a legal counsel. In that particular instance, the legal counsel also was a, was a partner in crime with the hacker. And uh, the legal counsel said, I'll be uh, sending you the information, bank account information of the party in China to whom you are to send. In three transactions, this uh, Indian CEO authorized the payment totaling to uh, 130 crores. I think it's about $18 million or something. So like me, maybe you're wondering, is it possible for us to be duped? A boarding a bus or train, is it possible for you to lose your wallet? Is a question you'll be asking yourself, would I be so dumb that I let uh, somebody pick my pocket or somebody walk away with my laptop or my briefcase? Did I feel uh, dumb to allow this to happen? If it's going to be an issue about your wallet and uh, your laptop, imagine an organization losing 130 crores. There are many incidents like this that would have happened. Uh, down the line, the, the line, I will share with you a little, few more cases that have happened like this. Uh, as you can see, these are instances which have happened in India, which are uh, exposure to organizations to cyber risk. Uh, as I was mentioning, private information uh, is a very sensitive thing. As we speak today, 8th of October 2020, the sensitivity is not much because we don't have a tough legal provision which makes the organizations responsible about uh, uh, preserving or processing or transferring or sharing or disposing and as I mentioned to you forgetting private information but uh, there is something coming as you may very well know there is a, a, a personal data protection bill that has been tabled passed by Lok Sabha I think it has been transferred it has been referred to a select committee I think today yesterday or today I read a news that it may be tabled in the parliament it may become law when it becomes law, those who are aware of GDPR, which is the regulation in Europe, compelling organizations to be very compliant about uh, private information. And if they are negligent about it, or they've been careless about it, they've been non-compliant, very severe fines are levied in, uh, in Europe under the GDPR regulations. The Indian uh, Personal Data Protection Act could be similar. I would not use the word replica or mirror or it has been copied, but that model has been followed in India. The purpose is to make uh, organizations more responsible. There's a counter argument. Somebody told me, Sir, Mr. Arunachalam, you go to the railway station, there's a chart uh, posted on the train of passengers, it contains PAN number. So your name and PAN number is so easily shared. So if, if you as an individual give away your PAN number, anybody who's asking, you, are, you go for a, buying a refrigerator, somebody gives EMI, you happily give uh, salary information, you happily give PAN card, you give Aadhaar card, you hand over uh, that information freely, how can you expect uh, equally another uh, agency or organization to be responsible? The point is, my sharing and facing uh, difficulties is my business. I can't blame anybody. But if I shared it with another organization, if it is proved, it has been taken out of that organization, then the organization becomes responsible. If I give it to them, it is up to them to preserve it and safe keep it. If it is proved, the question is, can it be proved? Uh, professionals and experts say it can be proved from which computer, from which IP address it has been taken off, that can be proved by forensic investigation. If it is proved that a hotel gave away information about 10,000 customers, or a hospital gave away information about 10,000 patients, including sensitive diagnostic reports, let us say a frequent example I quote, of a, a highly accomplished movie actor, his uh, cancer uh, diagnosis is uh, leaked, and then he's got another 200 crores worth of movie under production, what can happen? What kind of liability can come on the hospital? This is because it can be proved the diagnostics are stolen from the hospital. It can become heavy on them. So it is it is already becoming quite uh, uh, difficult for Indian corporates uh, if they are not uh, appreciated this uh, risk. Uh, possibly the knowledge is shared, when experience is shared, when instances are uh, explained to them, they will uh, make better sense of uh, cyber risk. And the last one is uh, not everybody, a large Indian software firm during our corona lockdown period had faced a, a ransomware attack and it became news. So if, it, if it's going to be 
so difficult for an organization which already has a maturity level to be careful whatever i spoke to you about the infrastructure being uh, quite uh, good cyber security being quite good they themselves possibly could be providing cyber security services if it becomes challenge for them then imagine the position of other organizations so india is already hot and uh, there are reports uh, to say that india is the possibly second or third most uh, uh, vulnerable or most impacted uh, country in the world in terms of number of events that are taking place and uh, uh, another not connected report i saw that uh, those those hacker groups which are particularly targeting banks are not wasting time trying to hack into multinational banks and very big uh, banks because it's uh, difficult for them they are in 20 this this report came in 2018 so 2018 19 20 they may be completely focused upon asian bank that report mentioned about asian banks and i am seeing that asian banks within asian banks also they could be concentrating on smaller banks and among the small banks today uh, you would have read this, uh, rbi has come up with the uh, infrastructure uh, cyber uh, infrastructure regulations for cooperative banks and one of the largest incidents in india happened in a cooperative bank so i think these are uh, risk feature that uh, one must uh, recognize and if you have somebody whom you know one must relate to them we know pretty well that uh, cyber risk could be both from within the organization and outside the organization that can be a disgruntled employee who may create the compromise in steal data or he may allow somebody to access he may use a usb device given by somebody and then he can compromise maybe a negligent a negligent employee as i was mentioning a negligent employee is definitely going to open an attachment definitely going to open a zip folder zip folder with a malware definitely going to click on a hyperlink and it is going to happen unless unless we reach this feverish pitch of conveying to everybody that uh, be careful with uh, what you receive in your uh, email as i tell my friends and sometimes my customers that uh, a hacker reads my email before i do every day morning if i wake up at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock a hacker Uh, has read my mails i am not a very important uh, target for him if i am a cfo i can transfer uh, 20 crores or 5 crores or 10 crores i am i'm somebody with financial authority or i am in a position to instruct somebody else to transfer money i am an attractive uh, target so if i am a very important uh, person in the organization with authority with powers with financial powers especially or with with, with the normal work including transferring money accessing a bank portal every day and transferring out money i am the prime target for a hacker my mails definitely will be read by a hacker he is going to see in what language uh, i am going to write uh, 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 mails to my subordinates to my bosses exactly the same language he will write and then impersonate me and one day money is going to go but outside risk are seem to be much tougher because it's coming from an unknown source you don't know from uh, is it going to be a village in bihar or jharkhand where they say is known for uh, this kind of electronic theft the the fraudsters are hold up in one particular village in some state or is it going to be somebody from north korea or, uh, or china or uh, uh, eastern europe we don't know uh, so the outside threat is seems to be much difficult much difficult to predict and uh, i believe hackers are uh, uh, highly accomplished uh, uh, computer engineers and software uh, specialists so they are able to be ahead of law enforcement they are able to be ahead, ahead of the security uh, cyber security firms and cyber security professionals is always catch up with the law enforcement and uh, these uh, hackers so i think uh, uh, we need to recognize this and then train ourselves to consider and then identify the threat as soon as before it's going to hit us what can uh, an organization lose which is going to be very difficult as the uh, law develops in india will be the uh, personal information of our uh, vendors of our employees if you are a company which is paying salaries uh, directly into the employees account definitely you're going to have the bank account number in your server of all employees uh, across locations then you may be having their uh, personal information bank card data maybe aadhar card information then tax information that is going to be severe it's not a big risk as seen by indian corporates today because the law is not in place the day law uh, uh, comes into force one more question is the typical in, uh, argument in the indian context is will it be enforced is it going to be light or organized or, or governments and uh, the authorities 
uh, are going to be light about it they will be uh, little relaxed they are not going to act tough is it going to be like that or is it going to be a uh, strict enforcement we are to be worried to see but if these incidents are going to grow and uh, our government uh, possibly decides to be act tough the way they may be a little firm and rigid and unrelenting in let's say gst or customs or uh, or today you will be seeing anti money laundering they are taking a more tougher posture day by day if the government takes a tough posture when it comes to handling private information uh, or compromise of private information to be held totally uh, to be accountable on the part of organizations this becomes very important if you have your uh, uh, your own software which you developed in house or if you have your your developed software with the help of outside agencies it's uh, residing on your system that can be a big exposure for you very importantly business information uh, i used to quote uh, this case of uh, a tire manufacturer who exports anti person products to us they are very special tire manufacturers so that organization feels that uh, they don't have uh, the cyber risk that i am talking about if i am talking about cyber risk to, to be severe they think nobody even knows that uh, they are there they are a very small group player all that i told them in that uh, discussion is it is easy for a chinese tire manufacturer possibly their competitor to engage a mercenary hacker and then copy everything that they have in their system all uh, uh, specifications given by the principals in us or europe and then all commercial information including costing and all the uh, invoices to know whom they are supplying at what price and also the volume that they are producing everything can be copied and then uh, your competitor is ready and fit to approach the same customers and offer your own product possibly a better product and then for less than the price that you are quoting so it can become a severe business situation if uh, if the uh, competitor is able to access uh, your information uh, then contract information so all of this information is uh, going to be very important for an organization that uh, you can't afford this to be lost what can a cyber attack uh, result in for an organization as i was telling liability is a very uh, important uh, uh, exposure then in ransomware cases cyber extortion somebody can take control of your entire system and demand money from you maybe in the form of bitcoins then your your data can be sold in the dark net the money can be taken away either by coming in and taking your credentials logging into your own bank account taking away money or uh, by duping you into paying off to a hacker making you pay to a genuine party then uh, if you are a regulated entity like uh, let's say a bank or an nbfc or a chit fund company or a credit card company or an insurance company if you are a regulated entity even a stock broker then you are going to face the investigation by the authorities and uh, maybe heavy fines and penalties a couple of years back you would have seen in the news within a short period of maybe a couple of weeks a uh, reserve bank uh, imposed a fine on so many banks mentioning that their cyber infrastructure especially the uh, control on swift platform was not as per specification there was a heavy fine imposed uh, in crores so it can become quite and those uh, that imposition of fine was not even with an incident no incident happened but in the inspection or or we found out that or or we felt that they, they are not compliant with the, what has been prescribed to them so these are the various uh, um, layers of risk a corporate uh, would face when a cyber incident happens a uh, very severe thing can be losing your customers the same customer may not give you a repeat order the customer giving you some volume may not give higher volume uh, uh, a prospect who is evaluating your bid may not come back to you and uh, give an order it can be extraordinarily difficult for organization but these are just what can happen to an organization from the financial sense of point what can be a financial impact on an organization is court awards again an argument can be in india to get a court award it may take 20 years but after 20 years you going to face an award <coughs> at that point of time you have the resources to pay that award is a big question then whether you are wrong or not whether you handled your data responsibly or not somebody is suing you whether uh, if they are successful or not you may end up incurring legal cost or defense cost and as i said regulatory fines investigation cost at least one case i know the forensic investigation cost the organization a small bank uh, nearly 2 crores the fees paid to the forensic investigators uh, totaled up to 2 crores so for an sme it's not going to be easy to go through this there's lots of money as i was mentioning from your uh, bank accounts then uh, paying off money thinking it is uh, a genuine party if a ceo or a chairman is writing 
to a, a subordinate asking for transfer of money and that CEO is not a real CEO, is a hacker, then it is usually termed the jargon used is fake president fraud or a CEO fraud. But if a vendor or another agency, a supplier, sends a mail, he's not the real supplier, he's a hacker, he sends an invoice which is not the correct invoice, it's with a bank account number of a hacker, then that is usually termed as business email compromise, business email fraud. That is today, FBI in US is expecting worldwide this to be a $28 billion uh, uh, crime where uh, worldwide organizations are definitely going to lose money because not everybody is the same level of awareness or preparedness to expect that kind of an attack. Stocks are inventory fraud by manipulation of your uh, account and stock books by a hacker. All of this, each of this is going to be a financial impact on the organization. And uh, this is going to be get to the next level, as I was mentioning earlier, where industrial control systems are going to be hacked. Already th thousands and thousands of events, thousands and thousands of attempts are being recorded by a certain US and certain, certain in India or the respective uh, uh, monitoring agencies. Thousands of attempts are there. Some could be successful attempts. Successful attempts are being reported, as I was telling, the uh, steel manufacturer in Germany or an aluminum smelter in Norway or an automobile manufacturer. There is going to be a big event for manufacturing industry. And if not manufacturing industry, definitely your uh, infrastructure or uh, water, uh, nuclear or power infrastructure, maybe transport systems, air, uh, uh, air uh, control, air traffic, or even railways is, is going to be dramatic. And uh, uh, it's going to be very difficult to manage unless the level of awareness is there. <clears throat> the question is, are these in risk insurable? All the time we spoke about the risk that is being there. The question is, is it insurable? Uh, the good news is there is insurance cover available worldwide from providers who are already quite uh, well aware of the risk that is uh, being discussed. But the question is, is it is the risk 100% there or uh, part of the risk uh, is to be covered? As I speak to you today, in all your policies, even if your motor car policy, not 100% of your risk is covered, there are some exclusions. You will see that certain risk, even in your motor insurance policy being excluded. If you have a health policy, there are exclusions. If you have a life insurance policy, possibly there are exclusions. If you have a personal accident insurance policy, likewise, every insurance product, is, which is a contract, worldwide may have exclusions. Likewise, cyber insurance also would uh, bring in certain exclusions, which will be typical to cyber uh, insurance cover. Uh, beyond those exclusions, what is specifically mentioned in the insuring clauses are clearly what uh, risk the policy would cover. I have taken a typical template that is available in India. Uh, when it comes to Indian market, there are about half a dozen insurance companies who are uh, willing to provide coverage for uh, cyber risk. Uh, they, they are different from each other in terms of the policy wording. There may be a common uh, or identical portion of their policy. There may be differences in the policy wording. This is the, what you see on screen is a typical Indian market wording, uh, which covers loss of your uh, finance, uh, loss of your funds due to electronic theft or due to a communication fraud. Somebody wrote to you, made you, uh, they duped you into transferring money and e-threat loss is something uh, but uh, somebody taking control of your uh, uh, IT system and then uh, demanding ransom. Maybe ransomware is connected to this e-threat loss. The vandalism is a hacker damaging your cyber infrastructure. Very importantly, business interruption. That is, if your systems are down, your business is, uh, has been stopped, you're losing revenue by the hour, maybe for a few days. Uh, that is also common. Your loss of uh, revenue, uh, which is to accrue you if you've been in business, and if you're incurring any additional cost to recover your system, that is also payable under the policy. So business interruption, e-business interruption is a very important coverage uh, for the cyber insurance cover. And, uh, and uh, equally importantly, various expenses you may meet in handling a cyber attack, whether it is engaging as a forensic investigation agency for investigating where the compromise took place, from which uh, direction, which IP the compromise uh, came, which IPs in your uh, system have been compromised. You may incur cost for engaging forensic uh, agency uh, if you are in a business where you are already a well-known organization, you don't want the incident to uh, damage your reputation. You may want to manage it, not completely cover up, but manage the way it is being discussed in public. You may engage a PR firm to make sure that there is a discussion which is uh, discussing facts, but nothing beyond that. The cost of incurring a PR firm. 
if there has to be a negotiation with the ransom uh, uh, situation where a hacker has to be contacted, you can't do it yourself. There's not something that, do, that you do every day. You may engage a security firm, somebody who is an ex police officer or ex army officer or ex uh, uh, bureaucrat who may handle the negotiation on your behalf and make sure it is done carefully and uh, make sure that even after paying ransom, you get back your system. There can be a theoretical situation, you pay a ransom, but you're not got the system back, something like that. So these expenses that you incur to engage these uh, outside agencies are also payable under the policy. A typical cyber incident policy worldwide would have these two sides. One is what you see on the screen, which is the first party cost uh, and expenses. The other side of cyber insurance is third party liability. There are different types of liability uh, exposure that you may have. Disclosure, disclosure liability is what I mentioned about compromise to private information. A privacy breach is typically what is there in disclosure. You, do, you never disclose because of a breach that information got disclosed to the open. Uh, uh, to, to, to the open public and uh, the data owner, which can be an individual, maybe a policy holder or a bank account holder, or it can be an organization which has given the data to you. Maybe a bank in the US gave uh, data of private individuals to an Indian software company or Indian BPO or Indian call center or an Indian uh, uh, hospital or a health insurance company gave it to a medical transcription company. If that is compromised, even the principal may be suing you for the disclosure, unintended disclosure, but un, uh, which happened in an unauthorized way. Then liability because of content going out, uh, where you are holding uh, sensitive and valuable information, which is content given by the principal or another agency, a contracting party, then that gets uh, compromised. Liability arising out of that. Reputation liability because of what data was stolen from your system, somebody's reputation was uh, was impaired. Likewise, there are as many liability exposures that are there, which a cyber policy would cover, which insurer uh, will cover this in what manner, by what name, will vary from one policy wording to another policy wording. What is more important is when you're buying cyber insurance, you're not just buying, buying cyber insurance protection. The insurance company being a cyber insurer, uh, most likely is already ready with a panel of forensic investigators, a panel of lawyers who can assist you and the panel of other agencies who may be relevant to the, to the situation. So the insurance uh, company is going to assist, offer uh, the, these agencies to be involved so that everything is done in a very professional, responsible and efficient manner. This also comes along with the insurance policy that the insurance company doesn't sit back and then watch you handle the situation. They are going to be involved by offering the services of uh, these agencies. As the policy is uh, properly structured, the expenses of these eight organizations also would be part of the indemnity. Typically, an insurer before accepting your risk or the cyber risk would want to know what is your uh, background of your organization or your bank or your pharma company. Depending on how uh, important is data or information to you, then depending on what is the cyber security infrastructure, depending on whether you are exposed to cloud or uh, not exposed or partly exposed to cloud or 100% you are cloud dependent, depending on your uh, hygiene, they're going to ask you for your BCP, your DR plan, your uh, IT security policy, your cyber security policy, what information you disclose in your proposal form, would all uh, give a sense to the insurance company who's your underwriter. So number one, decide whether to accept your risk. Number two, to what extent you'll accept your risk. You may want 20 crores limit, he may say, I'll give you five crores limit. Then uh, decide upon what premium to be charged for you, depending on all these parameters. Uh, if you have already had a cyber attack, which you will report honestly, then depending on that also the price will be fixed. Then uh, all insurers are not the same in the way they look at cyber insurance. Uh, one cyber insurer who is very happy to cover banks may not insure pharmaceutical companies. Then one insurance company who is very happy to cover pharmaceutical may not want to cover IT companies. They may have their own preferences in whom they accept for cyber insurance. Depending on the information that we provide, depending on the background of the organization, they will come forward to offer risk. There are about uh, half a dozen uh, private insurance companies in India who are happy to provide cyber insurance, possibly to the scale of about uh, 20 to 30 million US dollar uh, level of some insured. Some insured is called limit of indemnity. To that extent, it is possible to place the cyber risk within the Indian market. All your other liability policies would not cover cyber risk, which is why I've shown this uh, slide. Your director's officer's liability policy or an errors and omissions policy. None of these policies would cover uh, cyber risk. But alongside cyber, 
when i mentioned loss of money i also want you to know the cyber insurance doesn't per se cover the entire exposure for losing money uh, today it is uh, it makes sense for indian organizations to also cover uh, take a crime insurance policy along with cyber these are instances where organizations lost money every such every incident you are seeing on screen is an incident where a bank or an auto ancillary or a pharma company or even an insurance intermediary they lost money they paid off money in crores to hackers again i, I am bringing you to this question is it possible for me to be fooled or duped the answer is it's an everyday possibility anybody in our organization who is not going to exercise the due care and not have the level of awareness and the alertness could end up losing crore not only that he is making mistake he will make the organization to lose in crores these are such instances and you can see global organizations i can name them google and facebook together have lost 100 million dollars to a to a hacker a, a lithuanian or slovenian uh, hacker has duped google and if google and facebook are going to lose then you can imagine a normal indian corporate uh, how safe they are from the methods and methodologies and the criminal activities of uh, hackers so when it comes to insuring your money typical cyber insurance policy alone would not be a complete solution so we always advise as an insurance broker i always advise that you also take a cyber insurance policy along with a crime cover take them together for the same limit maybe take for a common limit like a floater limit keep both the policies maybe don't pay double premium maybe pay about 20 30% more but have the wider cover of having a crime insurance also so ultimately Uh, we are seeing increased activities in our country especially during 2019 20 uh, the water we will talk about uh, compromises of threats have gone up substantially in 2020 these are the um, view points on cyber risk for uh, e-commerce mobile banking financial institutions health care you know you recently read about a hospital in europe i think in germany where ransomware took place they were not able to operate because they had to divert patients to other hospitals because their uh, systems are not going to work Uh, then corporates uh, in different layer they are going to face compromise. IT is a big uh, discussion point on uh, their uh, security exposure. And in COVID times, we have seen that COVID nineteen itself is the pretext for which uh, by which uh, hackers are able to get successful entry into organization. Merely saying COVID apps or COVID uh, guidance or COVID advisory, they are able to get access. Work from home is a big topic as to security. How secure are organizations in a highly distributed manner? Uh, what organizations do to handle the work from home atmosphere is another big topic when it comes to cyber uh, risk cyber insurers would definitely want to know how are you managing work from home what kind of patch management or what kind of security protocols you have for uh, telling uh, your employees to be careful making sure the patch uh, is management is done uh, across the uh, network including the homes of your employees as sophistication of uh, hacking grows The cyber risk professionals, there could be uh, cyber risk professionals in this group also, are definitely trying to catch up with the hackers and try to prevent the future attacks. And as they are uh, doing, uh, going about doing that, insurance is also trying its best to catch up. If this risk is so unmanageable, cyber insurance can be one tool or one one methodology to transfer the risk from the shoulders of corporates to the shoulders of the insurer. It is having limited capacity. it may have a limited solution which is why in singapore there is a cyber risk pool maybe few months back they announced that a 1 billion dollar singapore dollar uh, cyber risk pool is created because just insurance companies themselves cannot address this risk it may be much bigger than that at least the ceo of swissri has compared cyber risk to be that of uh, like a war you can't insure war can you insure war when 10 uh, 10 bombs are being dropped and there is a blitz krieg uh, you can't insure war so he has uh, compared cyber risk to be something similar to war uh, we may get to that point uh, but as of today the good news is insurance companies are there insurance brokers like us are there to talk to you about risk and uh, a solution that is possible given the environment that we have uh, a solution that's available ultimately i have sat through cyber risk uh, events round tables where i have no business to be there i'm not a cyber risk professional but i am there to understand how this operates and to tell that limited audience that if all of this fails if cyber security fails you have insurance as a fallback thank you very much uh, thank you for the uh, patience uh, wicket can you come in if you have questions yeah there have been uh, thanks uh, sir natchalam it's been a wonderful session 
so there have been a few questions and more are coming in so i will start you know getting into the questions as they are available and uh, we request all the participants to post the other questions that they have in their mind i'm sure they would have been so hooked on your presentation they may have just been coming up with questions so what i already have yeah. well i think uh, i already started with the uh, saying that the proof of the pudding is in eating it so first of the question comes from mr vignesh chandrashekar he want to know how many cyber insurance claims have actually been paid in india uh, mr vignesh that data is never going to come out in its completeness even as the risk practitioners like you we are also very keen to know which organizations have claimed which insurers have received those claims which insurance surveyors have assessed those losses how much uh, the value has been assessed for and how much of that has been paid it is not likely to come out for one reason the first genuine reason is uh, any insurance uh, claim is a confidential transaction the receiving entity the claiming entity would not wa want to want the public to get to know about it particularly liability insurance uh, claims are kept in strict confidence because they don't want the outside world to know uh, what kind of liability insurance covers they have for what some insured and who is the claimant and how much uh, some some uh, issues can be reported in papers uh but uh, there are claims being received what i'm going to tell you is there are claims being received uh in many cases forensic uh, investigation cost is being paid in some cases there has been settlement it is not going to court as you know pretty well in uh, a court a civil suit in india will take about let's say 10 years or 15 years for the lower court to give an award because of the detailed trial and then if somebody goes on appeal it's going to take another 5 years or 10 years Uh, there are cases where after 28 years or 30 years the final appeal has come out from the supreme court uh, people are not interested to go and then fight such a long battle unless it becomes very heavy but as of now the claim scenario is there are claims happening there are attacks happening uh, these incidents are being reported they are being disclosed in the proposal forms each year that uh, such and such thing happened and uh, insurance surveyors are there to assess these losses if they are not cyber security experts they engage outside experts as subject matter experts and then take their help to assess these losses forensic investigation cost and then uh, uh, legal representation cost uh, if it's a court case defense cost is being uh, considered and paid but uh, how much has been uh, claim paid in a legal award nothing has come as of yet for this reason that the legal trial is uh, taking long but in the western world i can tell you uh, it has been reported in uh, media target uh, uh, corporation where the big uh, event took place uh, had a 100 million dollar uh, insurance policy and uh, they have received uh, that money and then but their loss has already crossed 400 million dollars so frequently customers end up buying limits much lower than what they may face as a liability but uh, the answer uh, answer to your question is you won't you will never get data on this not yet next question okay yeah so uh so yes all of us would like to know it but then you know the data is not available on the public domain so and uh, i think even a couple of cases that are settled i think uh, uh, it would be prudent not to discuss the name public domain yeah. so uh, the next of the question comes from mr rajesh he wants to know when there is a crime which involves both a cyber crime and a non cyber crime how would uh, cyber policy support uh, can you repeat the question arun yeah when there is a loss where there is a combination of a cyber crime and a non cyber crime how would the policy respond so no, how would a cyber uh, policy respond uh, yeah see uh, a typical uh, corporate in india has uh, uh, finalized their insurance in this way there are two three different uh, scenarios number one majority of indian corporates still have only cyber insurance policy and a good number of them have a cyber liability policy and uh, uh, i know instances where they realized after buying a cyber liability policy it doesn't cover their own funds if they lose their funds the policy doesn't pay the policy pay is only third party liability if there is financial loss to third party claimed against this organization the policy very much covers it does not cover the loss of funds of the insured entity that is one scenario then there are organizations who buy a cyber insurance cover and away from it a separate crime policy 
very frequently from different insurers. Their cyber insurance is different from their crime insurance, which is very, very difficult. It is going to be dangerous for them because either of these insurers is going to say this is a claim you have to file under your crime wording or this is a claim you have to file under your cyber wording. There will be a tug of war between your cyber underwriter and your crime underwriter if they are different insurers. Uh, advice, advisable situation is you buy a cyber cover and a crime cover with the same insurer, possibly with uh, support to be the same reinsurer, and then uh, the wordings are properly designed. Uh, you know, uh, any good cyber cover or a crime cover is or as good as the add on covers or extensions, which are relevant to your business. So, if the add on covers are properly structured between cyber and the crime, it is going to be a little more clear. Even more clear is uh, to understand this if there are certain add on covers which you will get only under a crime insurance cover, you will never get under a cyber insurance cover. So, uh, uh, I would believe today that when an event happens, if the structuring is done properly and carefully with a lot of understanding and discussion, uh, it's easy for us to say this is clearly a cyber attack, the data is gone, you are facing a forensic investigation, then the cyber policy has to pay. No money has been lost. It didn't seem to be an event where uh, money was uh, gone, then your crime is possibly not going to come because crime predominantly covers loss of money or securities and uh, possibly stocks. It is possible from the facts of each case to clearly identify is it going to be a uh, cyber cover claim or a very rarely it may be such a uh, difficult situation in my viewpoint. And the way the policy is structured, it may be possible for us to easily push it under a cyber or a crime policy. But rather, you should not end up is having only a cyber policy, which is only a cyber liability policy, number one. Number two, if you have taken both, taking it from two different insurers is going to be deadly for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Venkat, give me a minute. Uh, my, uh, I want to elaborate this one. Say, we have an employee which has left the company. Yeah. Fine. Okay. And he has access to certain things. And he intrude in the company system and do something. So it will cover under employee fidelity, it will cover under cyber liability. Yeah, in, in, cy in cyber insurance, uh, the, uh, the policy excludes any activity of an existing employee. So, in the fact that you mentioned he already left the organization, he's a third party, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, right. not, not even an ex employee, he's a criminal outside the organization. Okay. So, it uh, depends on what he takes away from you. Did he take only data? Then obviously it's cyber. Did it take money from you? Obviously it is crime. Uh, well noted. Another example. Now a lot of people has a smart, uh, you know, the security system yeah. where the yeah. logs are very smart and given to one, two, three persons. Yeah. And people yeah. take a home burglary as well. And you have a, you know, the smart security system in your home. Yeah. So suppose yeah. if any theft is able, any theft is happening and which is happening with the use of a cyber crime as well. Yeah. And there is a physical crime, often a burglary of a home. Now, how both the insurance will play, or maybe if somebody has only a home burglary, can they take an excuse that it's a cyber crime? So that's why we will not cover. Uh, Rajeshji, when we're talking of home, when are talking of home, that takes us away from the discussion today, because today the focus is on corporates. Uh, when I'm saying home means it could be a, probably a, a smart security system of uh, an office as well. Ah, so we, if you talk about business uh, background, business premises, uh, manufacturing or a warehouse or a business premises, then we are uh, we are uh, sticking to our topic today. But uh, it's very easy to understand, Rajesh ji. What was lost? What was lost? What was stolen? If it's only data, I uh, say money is not lost. Goods has been taken away from the office. Say, say if you yeah, left, if goods have been taken, if goods have been taken, your cyber policy cannot respond. It will be a crime insurance policy. Well noted. Well noted. And third scenario, which is a which has actually happened and you quoted the swift road which has happened in Bangladesh, post which RBI has given a lot of guidance uh, to the people and they charge penalty. Yeah. That crime was a combination of. Uh, Physical crime and the cyber crime. How is the physical crime, Ajayji? Somebody has got the access to their computer system and then they use the identity misuse and then some certain transaction. And yeah. that person was then worth not the employee of uh, 
a particular bank yeah so it's a crime has happened with access of uh, it security and it system but uh, physically see uh, if, if you if, if you look at the wording of cyber incident policy it excludes anything to do with employee fidelity the cyber policy will not pay right but in the case of bangladesh it was uh, an employee was just a accomplice the mm -hmm. ultimate money went from bangladesh to federal the instruction went from bangladesh to federal bank in new york and mm -hmm. from there to sri lanka and from sri lanka to philippines and for philippines possibly money was taken out it went to a philippine casino also ultimately mm -hmm. the culprits are far away from bangladesh mm -hmm. right so so uh, ideally it is a, a, a case where it is not just limited to an employee it was a much bigger network of people who were, who were involved but the point there is the point there is if if a bank in in, the, in this case bangladesh bank if they had only a cyber liability policy they won't get anything because the, the, the money which went out is from the funds of the bangladesh bank it can be seen as their funds noted yeah So, Venkat, yeah. we have other questions, Venkat. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. So, um, Sharan, uh, Mr. Subha Bangera has a couple of concerns. He says today, with the uh, you know payments uh, made through phones, the links coming in, we giving our own documents and uh, you know credentials in KYC. He wants to know what's your advice, and he also wants to know: Are you aware of any software which will alert if there is an attack on the system? Yeah, what? Subha Bangera has asked today: The payment mode through phones has become more prone to be hacked. What is your advice, uh, Mr. Subha Bangera? I think it's Mr. Subha Bangera. He is. Uh, you are talking for myself, Mr. Subha, because I have always been nervous about it. I had occasion to talk to a, a, a forensic investigator. He is a post-incident expert. he doesn't advise you to prevent attack but when the attack happens he will come in and find out which ip from which ip the, the threat came from whether it came from romania or north korea he will give advice and possibly advice on uh, the future mitigation you should put in place i was talking to him because he was also advising some banks he was telling me that the safest for you today is to use a chalan or a check leaf go to a bank and pay a transact in money safest or worst case Uh, is to uh, if you want to do electronic uh, access to your bank, use it from a controlled environment, possibly a home and your own uh, broadband or your own internet. Not use the public internet. Some time back, I was discussing uh, using uh, your laptop or phone, and the Wi-Fi in an airport or a hotel is not, or even some other office is not going to be a safe thing to do, especially when you are going to do banking transaction. So doing it from your own desktop or laptop from within your home is safer. If you can't do that. Then uh, use your laptop in a in your office. Office possibly is a one shade better controlled environment. What he was telling me is never use mobile banking. I don't know whether that's a correct advice, but he was saying a mobile may not have the background to keep logs that are required to do a detailed investigation. Possibly not from a mobile device. And you may lose money. All right, the way you lose money from your laptop transaction, the same way you lose money from your mobiles. But for somebody to come and investigate and find out and get to grips of what happened and uh, from where the, the the threat came, uh, diagnosing the data or logs from a mobile is much more difficult and sometimes impossible. So he was advising me, he was uh, encouraging me not to use a mobile for uh, banking. Uh, banks may not like this advice, but when it, when it comes to uh, uh, using of mobile apps and mobile banking. Or using a payment uh, uh, a transaction from my mobile, I have stopped doing it for the past few years. I may be behind in terms of adaptation to technology, but I feel a little bit more safer, Mr. Subha. And as far as software for this to prevent this, I am not quite aware. And I am not a cyber security professional. I am a poor cyber insurance or broker, so I don't have awareness about the software. Possibly a cyber security professional will be able to advise you. Any other question, Mr. Yeah, so there are a lot of questions. So uh, there's not going to be a dearth of questions for you. So we are running uh, out of time. Sandeep I can see the Philip Samuel being tense. So keep Hello. Yeah. Okay. So Hello. I I'll try to cover many of them in one, if possible. Uh, yeah. Mr. Sandeep Sharma from Godfrey Phillips 
wants to know how inventory losses will be covered under cyber and crime. Yeah, yes, right. Sandeep ji, I have already responded to this. The cyber insurance policy is not meant to cover, by default, not meant to cover your financial losses. Definitely not meant to cover your inventory losses, which is why I spoke about crime insurance. So if your organization is buying only cyber liability insurance, zero chance. If your organization is covering, uh, taking a cyber insurance and a crime policy, you've done the right thing. But you've not done the right thing, you're dealing with different insurers. It is like buying a material damage fire insurance policy from one insurer and your loss of profit insurance from another insurer. It is a deadly decision. Never do that. Likewise, uh, uh, buying a crime insurance from a different insurer, not to be done. If you are so, buying, if your organization has already bought the cyber insurance along with the crime insurance policy, then to that extent uh, uh, you are covered. Ideally, theft of uh, stocks, theft of inventory, possibly even using uh, um, uh, manipulation of data, and then you actually lose your assets, will be a claim under a crime insurance policy, Sandeep. So uh, I got your point. I have a query, you know. Uh, uh, so I also understood that this small will not be covered under a cyber insurance. That's very clear. So uh, I just saw one of the point in the PPT as well. But Rajesh Ji has discussed with you. So when we talk about inventory loss here, my let me put my question in a different way. I have a CFA agent who is holding the stock on my behalf. Okay. Uh, so so it's it's a very live example I can give you. So we have a we are into business of tobacco cigarettes. Okay, so uh, uh, we store uh, we have a CFA agent, and uh, I don't have access to that location. That location is say for example in Leh. Okay, and for the upcoming six months there will be no access to that location from because of that all snowfall everything. Right yeah. now uh, we'll not be able to have any inventory check as well. My point here is is more kind of an misappropriation by my CFA agent or any of his employee or representative, right? Which I'll be able to come to know probably after four or five, six months when I'm been able to have an access to my that location, right? Now, if the, the CFA or any of his representative do some misappropriation, you know, is that can and, and that could be a loss to uh, my inventory probably, you know, so that's not a bulgary, that's not a theft. And we, we do have a Bulgarian theft policy separate. So this action cannot be termed as in Bulgari or theft. And I have my own doubts that this can be covered under a crime policy because recently I explored all the terms of a crime insurance policy and crime insurance policy talks about financial losses, not uh, losses on account of inventory loss. So that this is my question. This is my query. I, I, have, I have this confusion. It's up to you. See, to please I, I would believe a crime insurance policy would also cover loss of your uh, uh, stocks. It, it, no. Because you just check if you have the wordings, you can check the definition of the uh, wrongful act or a criminal act. Because different uh, insurance cover it uh, uh, by different names. Uh, uh, so I will request, I will request the the, the people here, uh, you know, uh, the team here, you know, that if you can have such wordings, because the quote, the RFQs which I place in the market and the quotes which I have received, that clearly says. That inventory loss is an exclusion under a crime policy. So if you if you do have any such uh, yeah. terms, you can share with me yeah. later on and, and and connect to me yeah. on my email ID. Yeah, Shantanu, Shantanu can support you on this, Sandeepji. Yeah, yeah, please. Thank you. Venkat, uh, running out of time. Yeah. Okay. So one last question I will go into without. Uh, uh, there will be some other questions which we will still not answer. We'll try to reach out individually to them. Yeah. Um, to give to round up the whole discussion. Uh, how do you think uh, the culture of an organization and the way the people behave have an impact on the way the organization controls its cyber risk and also, uh, you know, facilitates and ensures that their losses are minimal? I have seen a cartoon sometime back on this context, uh, like a boxing ring. One corner is full of uh, firewalls and sock and cyber security apparently all heaped up. The other corner is uh, some guy uh, with, uh, already drunk and intoxicated lying. This is Charlie, our best uh, cyber security uh, professional. is ultimately the human being. So, uh, as I was mentioning, the culture is defined by uh, the individual. Your uh, 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 lower most employee who is supposed to follow certain uh, level of uh, uh, carefulness, certain diligence and alertness, he will be able to protect the organization or he will be able to expose the organization. So ultimately, 
culture of an organization is something that the organization is more responsible in, in training people. So I would think today that uh, Indian corporates are already uh, catching up. They are able to train their people by reinforcing these thoughts as to how carefully they should uh, look at their data, how carefully they should uh, follow protocols. If uh, they say don't access Gmail or don't access public internet, not doing it. If they say use uh, virtual keyboard, not use your uh, keypad so that uh, if the hacker has put a key logger, you are able to avoid it, then using virtual keyboards. It's about not opening suspicious emails, suspicious attachments. That ultimately designs the cyber security culture of the organization. I think different organizations in different sectors are in uh, stages of maturity, but with more and more information sharing, like the way Shantanu and Way to Wealth have organized this knowledge sharing in their BFSI series, if more and more awareness is created, uh, naturally organizations will reach this uh, required level of uh, cultural, cultural maturity. I'm sure uh, these are, these uh, sessions will be uh, addressing those requirements also. Thank you. Thank you. Shantanu, over to you. We're running out of time. Yeah. Okay. So thank you to all participants, including a few from overseas who have turned out in large numbers this evening. Uh, Mr. Arunachalam, your in-depth technical understanding of the cyber policy conditions combined with your real-world claims handling experience. Wait for yet another way of absorbing an informative webinar. Thank you very much. I also thank my senior colleague, Mr. Venkateshan, Director of Corporate Solutions at Bharat Ring Service Workers. Our event partner, Blossom Advisors and Consultants Private Limited, has been helping us conduct this series successfully week after week. Blossom Advisors is a five-year young boutique debt syndication firm based in Mumbai with focus on supply chain and structured trade finance. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh Khemani from Blossom. We had initially conceptualized this as a five-part webinar series. Thanks to the overwhelming participation and positive feedback, we have decided to make this a regular feature. Our next webinar on 15th October, that's next Thursday, is on equity market outlook in pandemic. The speaker is Mr. Veera Sasdev, a very experienced fund manager. A link to the recording of this webinar, a feedback survey link, and registration details for next week's webinar will be mailed to each participant. With this, we have come to the end of uh, today's event and presentation. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. I would like to say one word of uh, thanks, uh, Shantanu, to all the participants for their patient hearing. And uh, from, on behalf of Bharatri, we are part of the organizations. I am very proud that we are associated. And I thank uh, Philip uh, for uh, hosting this. Uh, until we meet in another session, uh, good evening to everybody in this meeting. Thank you very much.